The prophecy of Jeremiah in today's first reading is filled with anticipation. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Unlike the Ten Commandments, which were written on tablets of stone, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. Those days. Those days are fulfilled when Jesus comes. But interestingly, when Jesus comes, he's, he stops talking about a day or days. He starts talking about an hour. The Gospel of John records the first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana, when Jesus seemingly turns down a special request from his mother, who notices that they're running out of wine and they're going to be embarrassed. And Jesus says, my hour has not yet come. In today's Gospel from John, Jesus says, the hour has come. The hour for what? He says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Well, what kind of glory is he speaking about? So in our parish, Mary Mother of the Church, we have a very special uh, recognition award called Man of the Year, Woman of the Year, and some amazing people have their names on that plaque in the gathering space of church. Is this the kind of glory that we should be aiming for? Should I be making more plaques so that we all get glory? Maybe establish a clergy person of the year at Mary Mother of the Church. <laughs> I will be so humbled as to allow Deacon Richard Sage to receive the inaugural award, and I'll get it on the odd number of years. <laughs> we know that that isn't the kind of glory that Jesus is speaking about. He begins speaking about a grain of wheat, saying, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And then Jesus begins speaking this way, about being lifted up from the earth, indicating the kind of death he would die. Does anyone else want this glory? Does anyone else want to follow Jesus. It's a troublesome invitation. In fact, Jesus says, I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. This is John's version of Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's a unique gospel because he doesn't repeat too many stories that are mentioned in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He tells new stories and new ways to describe them. And this Greek word, trouble, actually means an inward talk, a turmoil, being unsettled, thrown into confusion. But this hour also means the Heavenly Father will manifest the wonder of his love for the world. And also, Jesus will be lifted up from the grave. And Jesus will be lifted up to the right hand of the Father, resurrection and ascension. And Jesus promises to draw all people to himself, not just Israelites, but all people, to Calvary, but also to heaven. In this hour of Jesus, sinners of every nation can return to the Father to have their guilt washed away and be given new hearts to love as Jesus loves. So where Jesus has gone, this glory, 
we can follow him if we let him lead us. And as we heard in this gospel, to follow Jesus does mean hating the sin in our personal lives and hating our own selfishness. And it also means finding fulfillment in all that God has created us to be. Because this new law is not the Ten Commandments written on tablets of stone. A list mostly of don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. This is a new covenant and a new law written on our hearts and it's a list of do, love, love one another as I have loved you. And there's the cross again. It's a tough path of glory because it includes a cross. But it's also a path of glory that leads to resurrection and ascension into heaven. Maybe I don't need to be the clergy person of the year. Maybe you don't need to be the woman of the year or the man of the year. Maybe we just need to surrender a little more and make all those little sacrifices for all the people in our lives as Jesus has done for us.